بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر محمد شفیق اینڈ آئی ایم لیکچر اے ڈپارٹمنٹ آف اسلامک اینڈ پاکستان اسٹڈیز دا کورس آئی ایم ٹیچنگ یو از کالڈ انٹروڈکشن ٹو لاجک اینڈ دا کورس کوڈ از پی ایچ آئی ون زیرو ون دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹین اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس what are propositions and what are different kinds of propositions as you might remember that in the beginning when defining logic we discussed time and again that logic is the study of those methods and principles which distinguish between correct and incorrect reasoning now reasoning generally in other words is called argument and the main concern of this whole course uh, that is to say introduction to logic is about argument throughout this course we'll try to understand what are the correct arguments and what are the incorrect arguments so basically this course consists upon all those attempts to understand those methods and principles which distinguish between correct arguments and incorrect arguments so basically it means if you don't know what the propositions are we will not be able to know what is argument and if we don't know what is argument that basically means we do not know what is logic about hence this is very much important to concentrate and try to understand what does proposition mean and what are its different kinds so that's the importance of proposition in the subject of logic now the question arises what is proposition so we'll move on to the next slide and we'll try to discuss the definition and the kinds of propositions now what is a proposition basically propositions are the building blocks of an argument and as i said earlier that logic is the study of those methods and principles which distinguish between correct and incorrect reasoning or argument this basically means that the first method or the first principle of correct reasoning is that the reasoning or an argument must consist upon propositions so propositions are the building blocks of an argument but what is a proposition propositions are all those sentences which assert or deny something that would mean that all propositions are sentences but we cannot say with the surety that all sentences are propositions how because as, as i said that uh, the peculiarity of a proposition is that it is such a sentence which asserts or denies something 
that means it is a declarative sentence passes a judgment for example if i say this table is brown it is a proposition or if i say this room is not small i'm denying something about the room so this sentence is again a proposition because it is denying something on the other hand there are certain sentences which cannot be called propositions because they do not assert or deny something now in in a proposition there are generally two terms a subject and a predicate subject is that entity about which this proposition talks while predicate is that adjective or that thing which is added to the subject now when i say this chair is brown this chair would be the subject and brownness is the predicate of this proposition now when we compare subject with the predicate this act of comparison is called a judgment so when i say this chair is brown i am passing a judgment about this chair that it is brown or it contains a quality of brownness similarly when i say this room is not big this room is a subject and bigness is the predicate so in this proposition the quality of bigness about this room is being denied so we are passing the judgment about the room that it is not big so proposition is a sentence which asserts or denies something and in a proposition we basically compare the two terms that is to say subject and predicate and act of comparing these two terms subject and predicate is called judgment so this is the basic unit of an argument we need propositions in order to build an argument so this is the first principle of correct reasoning that an argument must be composed of proposition or such a sentence which is either asserting something or denying something now as i mentioned earlier that although all all propositions are sentences but all sentences are not propositions how because the propositions are those sentences which assert or deny something and there are so many other sentences which simply do not assert or deny something for example requests orders questions and exclamations etc although they are sentences but they are not propositions why 
because they do not assert to deny something. For example, if I say, where do you come from? Now this is a sentence, but it is not a proposition. Why? Because it is simply a question. It is not asserting or denying anything. Or for example, if I request you, would you please bring me a glass of water? Again, this is a sentence, but it's not a proposition because simply it do not fulfill the criteria of a proposition, which is simply asserting or denying something. Similarly, there are orders, exclamations, and so on. So, all propositions are sentences, but all sentences are not propositions. There is another difference between propositions and sentences, and that is to say, propositions are always either true or false, while for sentence, this is not necessary to be true or false. Why? Because proposition assert or deny something. When I say this chair is brown, basically I'm asserting brownness about this chair. And this could be either true or false. If I deny something about something, if I say that he is not tall, again, I am not, uh, well, again, I am I'm denying something about someone. It could be true or false. While the sentences which are not propositions, for example, questions or requests, they can neither be true nor false. Why? Because they are not asserting or denying something. For example, if I say, what is your name? Now, this question, it is neither true nor false. Similarly, if I ask you to get me a marker, simply neither true nor false. So, propositions are always either true or false, while Sentences do not necessarily have to be true or false. Another difference is that of propositions do not belong to any particular language, while sentences are always a part of a language. For example, if I say, this marker is black, it is a proposition. When I say, ye marker siya hai, again, it's a proposition. And if I say, the marker tor de, it's still a proposition. While a sentence is always part of the language, if I say this marker or if I say, for example, what is your name? That is the sentence of English language. But if I say, Aapka kya naam? This cannot be part of English language. This is a part of another language, which is Urdu. While language does not affect propositions, because propositions are the sentences which assert or deny something, and that could be in any language. So, propositions are not concerned with any particular language. Another difference between a sentence and proposition is that the form of both proposition and sentence are different. In proposition, 
as I discussed earlier, there are two terms, a subject and predicate. And the helping verb in the language of logic or proposition is called copula. So act of comparing subject with predicate is called judgment. That is a proposition. While sentence consists on subject, verb, and object. So there is a fundamental difference of form between proposition and sentence. So that's another difference. So if we come to know the differences between the sentences and proposition, it will help us to identify what are those sentences which are called proposition. Now, we'll move on to the kinds of proposition. Now there are, uh, generally speaking, there are four main kinds of propositions. And the first one is called a single or simple proposition. A single or a simple proposition is a proposition which expresses a single judgment or statement rather than multiple judgments or statements. For example, when I say this chair is brown, this is a single or simple proposition. Or when I say all chairs are brown, still it's a single or simple proposition. We need to concentrate here that by simple or single proposition, we mean where there is only one judgment or one statement in a proposition. It does not concern with the number of the uh, objects in that class. If I say all chairs are black, that is still a single or simple proposition because it is a single judgment which is comparing the class of chairs with the class of blackness. When I say all chairs are black, it's a single or simple proposition. On the other hand, second kind of proposition, which is called compound propositions. As it is evident on, uh, from the name of this proposition, this kind of proposition, compound means more than one judgment in a proposition. A compound proposition combines, combines more than one proposition in a single statement or is composed of more than one proposition. For example, when I say Ali and John are students, this is compound proposition. Why? Because we are making judgment about two people or it is basically this proposition is passing two judgments which can equally be divided into single proposition when I say Ali is student that is a single or simple proposition and then when I say John is a student that is again a single or simple proposition so when I say Ali and John are students, basically it is a compound proposition. Or when I say all chairs and all tables are black, again it's a compound proposition. Or if we say all chairs are black and brown, that is again a compound proposition. Why? Because there are two judgments about chair. 
blackness and brownness. And again, this compound proposition can be broken down into two simple or single propositions as all chairs are black and all chairs are brown. So compound propositions are those propositions in which there is more than one judgment that is called compound proposition. Now the third kind of proposition is called hypothetical proposition. A hypothetical proposition consists of two classes which are conditionally related to each other. For example, if I say, if it rains, then the ground will be wet. Or, if you come, then I will go. Thus, a hypothetical proposition expresses a relation between a condition and consequence. The clause which contains the condition is called antecedent, while the clause which contains the consequence is called consequent. When I say, if you work hard, then you will pass the exam. So the phrase which says, if you work hard, that is an antecedent. And when I say, then you will pass, that is called consequent. So a hypothetical proposition consists of two phrases or two statements. One is antecedent and the other one is called consequent. And hypothetical propositions, at, as it is evidenced by its name, has a kind of condition in this. When I say if it rains and when I say if you come, these are the antecedents while when I say then the ground will be wet and then I will go, these are the consequences. So a hypothetical proposition basically is called a conditional proposition. The fourth, the last one is called disjunctive proposition. And disjunctive proposition, as again evident by its name, is the proposition which is which contains a disjunction. And what is a disjunction? Disjunction is the phrase of either or or in negative sense, neither nor. If I say either he is tall or he is short, this is a disjunctive proposition. A disjunctive proposition consists of two or more clauses in which there exists a relation of alteration. In hypothetical proposition, there is a relation of condition, while in disjunctive proposition, there is a condition of alteration. In other words, a disjunctive proposition expresses two or more alternates, which are disjoined by the words either or, or neither nor. For example, he is either a teacher or a lawyer, or, for example, she is neither a student nor a worker. So these are the main four kinds of propositions which needed to be understood before moving on to the next topic of our lecture, and that would be argument. So we have learned about the propositions, the difference between proposition and sentence, and the kinds of propositions, which is proposition is, is, is the unit or is a building block upon which we erect our argument. So I hope you have understood this topic. And if you have got any questions, please do let me know 
so that we can discuss these before starting the new topic in my next lecture. Till then, thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.